G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. I was scrolling through Instagram the other day uh, looking for like early photos of my children just to show them how much they've grown really and I noticed this picture and I realized I've been doing space photography for 10 years. It was 10 years this year since I bought my first telescope, a Celestron 4SE. And if you've watched this channel over that time, then you know that I've grown a lot in that time. And part of that growth has been with you guys because you guys leave me feedback and comments and suggestions and ideas. And that saves me the pain and suffering of having to log into Cloudy Nights. And you've probably also noticed that I have other interests too. I have other hobbies. I have hobbies like drinking and reading and cooking and music and drinking. And I've got to say, of all the hobbies that I've had over the years, some sort of come and go. I was really into genealogy and drawing for a while, but the only ones that really stick with me have been guitar and astrophotography. It's those things I have to do every day, or at least I think about every day. The fact that it's been 10 years now means that this hobby has been more than just a casual side interest for me. It really got me by the balls. So in this video, I'm gonna do a retrospective of how far I've come, the things I've learned in that time that I can share with you, particularly some advice for newcomers, but also experienced astronomers too. And I'll also reveal a little bit about why I've stuck with Celestron Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes over the years. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. <laughs> I don't have a lot of photos from the 4SE. I didn't do any deep space work with it because it wasn't equatorial, so it wasn't long before this happened. It took one month. Now, honestly, that's too big a telescope for a beginner. I get that now. But the reason I got that particular telescope, a Celestron nine and a quarter, was because I saw Chris Hadfield had installed one on the International Space Station. I was pretty blown away to see that the same brand of telescope I could buy locally was up in space. That telescope is used to take photos of the Earth rapidly, especially during disasters. This is actually wild for a few reasons. Firstly, it's a telescope in space that isn't on the Wikipedia page list of space telescopes, but it should be. Secondly, it has a hyperstar reducer, so it shoots bright images at f2. And thirdly, you can search the US government database and download images taken by iSurf, which is the Celestron 9.25 inch telescope in space. Anyway, I tried my hardest to use this big telescope to take photos of space. Here's my first attempt at Carina. But of course, at native focal length, it was really hard to get a long exposure where my stars didn't look like crap. At this point, I'm not very good at polar alignment. I'm not guiding. I'm doing everything wrong, but I'm learning. At this point, it's been about 45 days since I bought my first telescope. Fast forward six years, and here's how I was going with the same target. Here's my Sombrero Galaxy from 2014, and here's my Sombrero Galaxy from 2024. I'm not showing these to flex, I just want you to know that I'm still learning, and we're all beginners once. I still see the flaws in my recent work. I'm still trying, but it does take some time and patience, and honestly, money. It took six months and a few upgrades for me to start to get a grip on polar alignment and guiding. And I was so proud of this photo. It even got featured by Canon Australia, much to my surprise, because I was using a basic Canon DSLR at this point. A year later, I bought a Hyperstar lens and everything got a bit easier. I was shooting fast and wide now, which was a lot more forgiving. I still sucked, but now I had a proper CCD camera and the Hyperstar, I was beginning to get stuff that was previously out of reach. And I still had to set up everything every night, but I was still addicted. Then I tried something new, something that I didn't think I was capable of, and everything changed that night. absolutely viral. Even the space station astronauts were tweeting about it from the space station. I got an APOD and it's one of my favorite moments in the last 10 years. I've taken similar, maybe even better ISS shots since, partly to prove to myself that I could do it again. But that original shot aesthetically was just framed so nicely. I love it. 
and I wanted to keep the momentum up. I started taking my YouTube channel a bit more seriously and doubled down on astrophotography. I still wanted to get better. Then the next biggest and most expensive upgrade came along. Having a permanent setup for my equipment perhaps had the most profound effect on my work. Instead of spending hours each night problem solving the setup, everything was solved and ready to go. I started to get more data faster. Brian Cox featured my work twice, live on national television. I had a Celestron 11 inch Rasa now to do the fast work to replace the Hyperstar. I got a better mount, and my images at all focal lengths instantly got sharper, even when I got up close. I started the Star Stuff Festival here in Byron Bay. I upgraded the observatory, I upgraded the telescope, I upgraded the cameras. At this point, I'm way in over my head. I've spent more than I ever intended to, but it didn't happen all at once. I bought my filters one at a time as I could afford them. I used my ad revenue from YouTube to help buy more gear because I couldn't justify spending all my wages on astronomy. Some things are more important and they'll always come first. But whenever I had a potential upgrade goal, I'd save and budget for it. And now it's 2024, 10 years since I bought my first telescope. Hyperstar or a dedicated RASA allows me to swap between wide and narrow fields of view so I can still do lunar, planetary, some small targets, as well as the bigger beautiful wide nebula. And as I watch my images get better, I know that it was always my fault my images weren't great, not the telescopes. If you gave me a 4 inch Schmidt Cassegrain today, I could make it sing. But after all these years, if there's one thing I've learned about myself, it's this. I need a bigger telescope. Look at that sky. It's looking pretty good, so any guess what I'll be doing tonight. I guess the point of this video was for me to look back on what I've been doing for 10 years and why am I still doing this? And if I was going to offer any advice, it would just be don't compete with other people. The only person you're competing with here is yourself. Look at your last image, see what's wrong with it. Try and figure out how can I improve that thing, that one thing, and see if you can do it better on the next image because I'm still doing that 10 years later. I know there are some people who get into this hobby and it's not for them, and I completely get that. It's frustrating sometimes. It's certainly taken me a good deal of patience, and sometimes it's downright infuriating. But for other people, I gotta say, it's especially addictive, and it's hard to stop, actually. And right now, 10 years later, that's where I am. I just can't stop. My name is Dylan O'Donnell and you've been watching Star Stuff and remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. The other weird thing about um, being on YouTube as an astronomer is that I'm watching myself grow old on camera. <laughs> and uh, it's weird. It really is. But um, I'll see you back here in another 10 years.